I'm Jochen Hick and I'm the director of uh, the GDR complex. In German it's Der Ostkomplex and it's a documentary about an eyewitness, a gay eyewitness who formerly was imprisoned for a couple of months in the Stasi prison in uh, East Berlin who has a very dramatic story and is still today telling this story but uh, uh, in schools and everywhere and also uh, clashes uh, with uh, people who are still aficionados of other uh, political ideas which are maybe socialism, communism and the film is very much about uh, how people talk about it because I think it's still a big taboo and in the end people are not talking really about it. They're only talking in their in their cohorts, but not there's no conversation really. Und was steht mit 100 Millionen? 100 Millionen Tote des Kommunismus. Wir machen ja keine Plakate, aber an den Grablichtern, die wir dann hinstellen. So, und ähm, mach mal hier. So, der Zweifel ist euch vielleicht da. So let's let's play Hollywood or whatever or mm -hmm. America. No, but I but we have to go back to the other side of the world, actually to the okay. former East, yeah. um, to historiography, the way history is being written. And uh, I think one of the characteristics of your films actually are that you don't really uh, take this hyper or like super intellectual like historical look at films, but you go into lives and always have protagonists who through emotions and their own life experience tell their stories and how they experienced in your case of course life in the former east of Germany mm -hmm. in the former GDR and why do you choose this approach at first and why is it so helpful for documentary film uh, since I don't do documentaries with a commentary and since I also usually don't do documentaries where I already have an opinion in the beginning and then I put like uh, 15 minutes of this opinion, 15 minutes of that opinion and, and this classical, uh, do, a, yeah. do a classical opinionated film. Uh, for the, uh, I did a lot, I think documentaries are about observing and really, really looking very carefully on things. And uh, this is what we did. So I almost never really commented his opinion or his uh, what he was talking about nor I commented what opponents of, of him were of the protagonists were uh, talking about uh, unless I thought now there's something for sure an audience would like to know and also I would like to know because that's a little bit too little I think there a question has to be made but I never judged or I never put in my own opinion to see oh now I'm I'm I'm, I'm asking like as a, as a political correct person here and there and here and there. Mm -hmm. And this is how this film uh, uh, happened and of course w uh, my films usually are not so much about like the content what people talk but about how they are talking because I mean if a film would be about the content what people talk then you can easily buy a book and read about it or read an article. Mm -hmm. And I think what's interesting about filmmaking is seeing about how are people expressing this? How is dialogue working? How, in, in which situations happen these interactions? And I think this is documentary. It's not that people present their quotes. So their, their performance in a way, their behavior. Yeah, their, their, their performance, their behavior, how other people react, what they say, what they wanted to say in the end. Don't say all these little things and, and interactions and things which go wrong in a discussion or why, why a discussion opens up, why a discussion goes like this. And I think that's interesting, especially when you do a film about uh, a political theme, because uh, 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 
the GDR complex is of course a film about a political theme, it's about the heritage of the GDR or, or who is uh, allowed to, or who is authorized to really speak about what the GDR was or what it wasn't. So, but if you look, if you would look at the current political discourse of mm -hmm. the now federal, mm -hmm. United Federal Republic yeah. of Germany, um, I think it is in this discourse pretty clear to label the former GDR as an illegitimate state. Oh, this is how it's being presented these days. And I think that you, with your, you know, uh, it's probably even like an artistic approach, because when you were talking about you want to look at the performance and the way people yes, say I'm, stuff I and mean, don't say stuff, you kind of like challenge this a little bit too. I mean, if it's, it's an not. illegitimate state or not, I, I think that's a question for historians. Yes. You know, yes. I think in a way not even for, for uh, uh, journalists sometimes, because you really have to go in depth and see whatever yes. happens. I mean... Uh, 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 there's very often also this question in the film, for example, Mario Rölick always wants that it's been told that the GDR was a dictatorship and many mm -hmm. people in the GDR would say, well, but the Nazi uh, uh, era was yeah. a dictatorship. How yeah. can you put this on the same level? And you know, yeah. and it's not about me to find an opinion on that, but it's... Uh, about the film to find out that these people are really fighting for territory in this whole discussion and how they do it, if they really talk with each other or if they uh, 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 remain in their little groups and are only saying, oh, these are the idiots or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's also a film, of course, uh, um, Mario Rölik, he was uh, imprisoned because he wanted to flee the GDR through uh, Hungary towards Yugoslavia. He was caught. He came into the uh, Stasi State Security Detention Center in East Berlin. And um, of but course, then the, but then he, then he always him. wants to have this e excuse, like many people who suffered from something uh, which happened in the GDR, they want to have this excuse. And it's also about uh, does excuse really happen? Are there any people who want to excuse themselves? How do you feel when people don't excuse themselves to you? Don't, don't, don't uh, Apolog yeah, yeah, apologize yeah. or, yeah, or, or yeah. yeah. I start again with the apologize thing, no, maybe. Fine. Okay. No, that's fine. No, no, just, yeah, <laughs> so so th that's a little bit it. And, and, uh, uh, and, and it's also a film about um, how is a life or how does a person feel who centers so much around this story because mm -hmm. he, a lot of time he spends like guiding groups through the former prison, he goes to school classes, it's like it's all around his life and f with many people identifying with the topic, mm -hmm. although there are many different variations of of so-called victims, how they mm. how they develop. Some people retrieve, or they, 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 they don't talk to other people. Some people become extremely bitter. Some people, their careers and their whole life is kind of destroyed, and they never get on their feet again. And, and others and, and just he, yeah. and others just adjusted fine. And ju <laughs> others just adjusted yeah. fine. And he's yeah. he's someone who wants always also a little bit to show. Oh, I, I survived and now I'm on top of everything because I'm well apart and I'm, 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 I, I can talk with all uh, the people. He's even talking with, high, uh, high, um, with pol politicians which were like uh, former presidents of, of German states and everything. And, you know, for someone who was... Um, uh, a waiter in, in a restaurant at the airport of Schönefeld, this is quite something. And I think he, he also created something around him, but it's also very truthful at, at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, how do you communicate, like with Mario, for example, yeah. how, do you, how did you meet him and how did you communicate your ideas to him? Uh, at, at first, he could have been part of uh, Out in East Berlin, which yeah. we did three years ago, I, exactly. me and Andreas Strohfeld. And um, for some reason, we always thought about him and then didn't think about him. Then we m met him again a couple of times and we were already far in the project when we reconsidered to put him in and then we really decided it doesn't work because his story needs uh, 
a big part after 1990 and the film kind of ended 1989, 1990. This is one thing. The other thing is like that there are also many other very valuable stories because there were like seven main people in this film and and if someone starts with like this deep prison story and everything the other stories seem then a little bit like oh they are more talking about atmosphere although it's I think as important you know but it I think it wouldn't have worked so I I thought and I also didn't want to do a, a victim story because we see a lot of victim stories on, on television already you know in terms of general GDR victims and and a lot of this has been made and I thought this is not my approach yes. not that I don't think he's a victim but this is too much in stone and I think what film can do is like always to to show nuances and things where people say oh I haven't seen it from this side and maybe a victim also can be some person who is very active and also victim at some point can be maybe aggressive and also a victim can feel feelings of envy and all these things because usually they are always shown like these nice people who are just victims and he was also um, open to show himself in all these different nuances because mm -hmm. he's um, well he's gay he's a little bit flamboyant maybe for some people and for sure he 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 also likes to talk and express himself and he knew what the film was about so so first of all it was very difficult to get money for it because um, people always thought what can you people we asked for money also sometimes television they they were not so sure what could be more than another victim story mm -hmm. you know and they were a little bit fearing the thing that he's also attached a little bit to a political party because he's member of the Christian Democrats Interesting. as but you can see in the film yes and 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 therefore therefore it needed time it needed time to to get some money and it took maybe two or three years and I was always saying uh, Mario I'm working on it and I hope it something will come out something will come out and then we we uh, uh, got the film funding of uh, Hamburg and later on television which didn't put money in it but uh, gave us some you know like uh, camera days uh, sound mixing and stuff and archival materials access to it and, and also the licenses for it but but uh, nowadays anyways you need television because otherwise films are not seen enough uh -huh. you know? but I want to go back to, to Mario okay. and like the, his story and the yeah. escape and then the you know imprisonment and um, what what personality traits do you think make him or made him collide so hard with the state? Why was uh, in the end, so in the end, he didn't collide so much because yeah. you know he, he was never very political before all this happened. Because yeah, he, I don't he's mean from the I don't mean the political, Berlin but just like the way he you know uh, nowadays the, the he's collided. No, no, the motive of you know wanting to escape and they're like and you said earlier there are some people that like. For them, it was easier to conform. Yeah, they didn't feel okay. The, the okay, okay. Friction. And I see. think I think he's one of those people, and he never made a secret out of it. Who would like a capitalistic state more than a communistic yeah. state? Because yeah. he likes consumption. He likes uh, whatever beautiful things. He he likes to have his private wealth as well. Not that he's asocial, but yeah, you know, yeah, this, yeah. these are things he wanted, and you even can read in his, his Stasi files that he was, when he was talking about why he wanted to go to the West, he said, "I wanted to have a better life. I wanted to have better chances. Uh, everything." The other reason, and I think maybe it's the main reason, but only Mario can tell this, is that he fell in love with a guy uh, he met once on a trip to uh, Budapest. And he was a politician from West Berlin, older than him, I think like maybe at that time more than 20 years older. Mm -hmm and who invited him already on the first day they met in, in one of these uh, uh, Hungarian baths and he invited him to the uh, uh, Hilton Hotel on the Fischerpastei which is this uh, where you have this beautiful view and he had a he had a, a large room or even a suite and all this was for Mario you know he 
he lived in a tent when he was there because East Germans, when they went to Budapest, they it was very expensive. They really could see they're going to Hungary and the Hungarians are preferring the West Germans because the West Germans have the nice money and and uh, uh, the East Germans, they, they were camping, basically. So from camping, he met this guy, and then he was in the suite in the Hilton. And of course, uh, he was impressed. Yes. Also yes. as a gay guy. Yes. When you like Dynasty, he's even saying this once in the film, uh, you must like this because the Hilton looks a little bit like this, you know, whatever. Not Laura Ashley's style, <laughs> but this <laughs> Dynasty <laughs> thing. It's fancy, yeah. yeah. It has some fanciness. Um, are you going to continue to work on deconstructing, you know, all these myths and also like very homogenous narratives around yeah. the GDR and implementing more personal stories, emotions, you know, the complexity back into that entire talk around it? You mean later in the future? On in the yeah. future. Is that um, I, I, I'm keen on doing it. There are still things I would like to do with it, but I think for the next film, this will be West Berlin. My next film is about the 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 whatever queer years while the wall was up, from the West Berlin perspective, and uh, to balance it out. To balance it a little bit out, and and I don't know why it happened. I even did a whole series after this out in East Berlin. I did a whole series of like oral history interviews with like about 25. Uh, 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 men and women from the former GDR about their life like we did up to four hour interviews which we condensed to one hour edited and I think now in the moment my 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 will or my wish to get more in depth with East Germany is a little bit it will come back. Uh, it it might easy. come back, but we are already doing research for the West Berlin film because okay. a lot of things in West Berlin, of course, have mm. been uh, observed by, by, by the Stasi as mm. well. And even the West, they had a lot of information about the West Berlin gay groups. Mm. They had a lot of inter information about what was happening in West Berlin with AIDS and all this. So we, and they were also observing these different leftish groups which were there and you know there was kind of a almost controlled SED party in West Berlin which was called uh, the SEV mm -hmm. uh, so, and um, so even some of these gay guys uh, back in the 1970s were, were part of it. And there are even stories about uh, gay guys from West Berlin who, who were very pro-GDR and who people tell that some went on Sundays to the wall and were painting the wall from the western side in order to have it look a little bit nicer or that someone went like a, like a, like a tunte, uh, like dressed like a, um, a drag. Uh, to some of these uh, uh, things when people from West Berlin uh, who thought left helped for example to clean the S-Bahn because the S-Bahn belonged to East Berlin mm -hmm. so so there's this thing about this one guy who who came in drag with all these other straight people and so he, he did like two two comments. He, he said, oh, I'm pro-GDR, I'm helping out that the S-Bahn is uh, in a better shape and I'm also a, dr a drag person and I'm also gay and so it's an interesting time. Wow, we look forward to that. Okay. Thank you so Thank much you. for Thank you. bringing the Oz Complex to okay. the festival this year. Yeah, Oz Complex, GDR Complex, we did, it's not the it's exact translation, I but... Know. In German it's called Oz Yeah, but East Complex for, for, for Americans would be maybe, I, I don't know. Maybe. The GDR maybe, complex. we never know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.